It was hell of a f***ing month. I've got a new camera to try out, kinda, and right before the so long waited trip we had to suddenly move into a new place, so it's been a mess in my head right until it was time to go to the airport. Luckily moving is almost done, trip is already behind and you know, I have to bother you with my travels from time to time, so bear with me. Yo, welcome back to Aperture Value, so today is a travel episode. Uh, the previous trip along the Silk Road happened around half a year ago. Therefore, I was pretty excited about this one. Like most of you, I can't wait to smash some fresh stamps into my passport. But we all know the drill for this year, don't we? The destination was Tibetan mountains, the western part of them to be more exact. I really hope they are still considered to be Himalayas, you know, for the bucket list. But after checking maps, they basically said Just like Himalayas, they're formed by Tibetan Plateau, but run from north to south. In China, this range is called Hengduan Mountains, and uh, most of it is located in Sichuan province. The capital of it is Chengdu, so that's where we started. I've got my Ricoh GR10 with me, it still had some Kodok Gold shots left on it, but since no way it would be enough, I decided to try out the legendary finest Fuji Velvia. And just in case, also purchased a roll of Fuji C200. And of course, I also took my lovely X Pro 3 with few lenses. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I got myself a Contax Zeiss 90mm 2.8 to try out. And uh, since I was so busy before the trip, mountains were literally the first place I've used it. Lastly, many of you asked to include in my X100 review how does it hold up as a travel camera in 2021, so it took its place in my bag too. Although the rainy season starts there in June, right before the departure the forecast showed rainstorms throughout the week, so honestly, I was already planning staycation in Chengdu. Because of the weather, our flight got delayed and uh, we arrived very late, so after getting our rent right, joined by our friends, we headed straight to hotel, where we slept until brunch time. The weather so far wasn't as bad, but still cloudy and chilly. It was enough to lift our spirits, cause we were praying to at least not have any rain. First stop was Yang, the place of Panda Base Research Center or whatever. And yeah, forgot to mention, Sichuan is where pandas come from, so it's like tequila in Tequila City. It's everywhere. And it would be a sin not to go and check out the laziest ass bears out there. Overcast sky with chilly humid weather was perfect, pandas were cute and uh, overall we left with positive emotions. After Panda Base, we hopped in the car and went to our next sleepover place, situated high up in the mountains. We chose this place because they have famous natural hot springs, so even though it was dark already when we checked in, I went straight ahead to soak my balls in these awesome springs, which by the end all of us enjoyed. This seems to be a great opportunity for Rico GR10, but I seriously was afraid that it would play a jack on me. Jack! Jack! Uh, 
it got me thinking I need to get some waterproof point and shoot in the future. Tell me if you have any ideas. Next morning was still cloudy, but after breakfast the weather surprised us by getting better and better. So we headed north through the mountain ranges, reaching elevation over 5000 meters above the sea level. We made a bunch of stops on the way to snowy mountains that we actually came for. For now, they're still far in the distance. For lunch we had a local specialty, spicy hot pot. Sichuan province is famous for its spicy flavors. I just hope for it to be not so hot on their way out. More and more Tibetan signs on the way. We made a quick stop in Tagong Prayer. There is a Tibetan temple with snowy Mount Yala in the background. They also had great yak jerky that I got hooked on since my Silk Road trip. For the night we stopped in a great place with beautiful view and a friendly doggy. Good boy. Early morning we set off to a nearby Moshe Park, which looks like an alien planet. Next stop was Yala Mountain, the snow peak mountain we've seen before in the distance. Up close it's even more beautiful. We had to stop for the night in Danba, a mountain town. But after having lunch, uh, there we find out from the owner that the road will be closed all day tomorrow. So after checking out the town, we headed directly to our next destination, therefore saving one day. We arrived late to a Four Sisters mountain park, but it was raining all night, and in the morning things didn't get any better. I made a Wet Sisters joke, for which I got slapped. Rain and mist were forecasted to stay all day, and the visibility was zero, so there was no point of going up into the mountains. I got a bit moody since it was supposed to be the highest and the prettiest place in our journey.
Anyway, as you've understood, I didn't take any pictures there, so here are some stock photos of this place instead. We decided to head back to Chengdu with a stop for lunch in a nearby city called Dujiangyang. It is famous for its centuries-old irrigation system, which is the oldest and only surviving no-dam system in the world. It was built centuries ago and is still used today. In, in camera world it would be probably Mamiya RBZ or something. In the evening we arrived to Chengdu and after checking in we went to see the famous climbing panda. Since we had overcast days afterwards, we turned down all the sightseeing plans and just went for some experiences, like the famous face-changing performance, as well as petting zoo. <laughs> and again, as you've guessed, I shot none of the cameras these few days. So in the end, I've had a glimpse of nice mountains, well, better than nothing, and also spend some time with Fuji X100 and my new Contax 90mm 2.8. Expect videos soon, uh, I still need some more time with them. All in all, what can I say? A break from routine is always nice. But I better get back to unpacking these damn boxes.